Embracing the smoke, the best rivalry in the South, perhaps CJ Stroud, Will Levis, Titans, Texans, old Oilers, uh, current Texans. Let's get into it. We got some uh, some Titan representation in the house. Let's embrace the smoke a couple weeks before the draft. Yeah. Yeah. It's the locker room on YouTube. You know what it is. Let's get it. Hey. Locker room. Yeah, we All right, we got a fun room. one today. We're a couple weeks away from the draft. I can see people are already lining up. Uh, we're going to embrace the smoke. We need a rivalry round here. It's boring as hell when you don't have rivalries. And I, and I feel like of all the rivalries in the NFL, the, the AFC South might have the least identity or the least consistency. We, we saw the uniform drama uh, kind of develop last year uh, with, the, uh, with the Texans and Titans. Uh, we've had a, a little bit of smack talk. Uh, on the internet, uh, and I'm going to bring on three guys who I think uh, I, I think they do. I mean, maybe I don't know. I think they represent the Titans pretty well. Uh, so we'll get uh, their POV. Before we do, though, let's play the clip that had uh, the internet going us. We might just jump into this uh, right off the top. This is uh, Leonard Fournette, or Firestone, excuse me. I said Leonard Fournette. God dang. I, I guess I saw that picture of him, Diddy, and Jay-Z, and I still had that on my mind. Uh, but this is Leonard Firestone. Uh, this was the clip that had a lot of Texans Twitter a little bit uh, up in arms. There's a sophomore slump. There's all these other things. We know how you want to play. We got film. They're going to start scheming out. Defense is going to know how you're going to want to do stuff from an offensive coordinator standpoint now. So, yeah, you had a good first year. But so did Dak. So did Zeke. They won the most games in Cowboys franchise history their first year. What have they done since? Zeke had to leave. And they maybe bring him back then. But it's it, – it's, you can't sit here and crown somebody after one year and think it's going to be good. You can't. Because this next year, we're, we're defenses are going to come for you. Oh, you, you did all this stuff? You don't think defensive players remember when they almost had you in a sack and you got away and you ran away and you didn't, you made a play on them and they keep showing it all off seasons on a highlight reel? Oh, mm -hmm. ain't going to happen to me again. I promise you I'm getting you down this time. This People are studying. Oh, uh, yeah, and there were people upset about that. Here is uh, Leonard Firestone. With, uh, we got Morocco T and we got RKL yes, sir. podcast representing the enemy line. Fellas, uh, how y'all doing? Man, doing good. Honored to be here, man. Glad to talk some Titans football, talk some Texans trash, and man, just just hit all avenues, man. We excited. Yeah, and, and uh let's let's just uh hop right into it. Uh I, I became hip to y'all because I've seen uh Morocco's uh hype videos, they're pretty Pretty damn crazy. They, they. I mean, and, and the good thing I like about them and, and why I was kind of drawn to it is it's not like you were doing it in 2019 after they beat the Ravens or anything like that. I mean, y'all were out of it. There were people wanting to lose games, and my man was still hyped up uh, for the whole thing. So I saw that. Then I, then I got the podcast. Uh, naturally, we've been kind of in football hell for the last few years. So, you know, you're kind of trying to just keep your tail between your legs, keep your eyes on your own paper, try to get out of that mud. But now it just seems like maybe we can get some, some rivalries going on in the South. Yeah. Yeah. I most definitely think, man, when it comes to the Titans, man, I, I feel like we at the top, We like the Titans and Texans, they've been hating each other since what they, since you guys created their franchise, you know, and I, I would believe that the Titans and Colts are also up there as well. And like we, yeah. we we have a lot of a history between both both, both who do y'all hate the most is it does it change is it is it kind of a fluid situation who who would y'all say and then this could be an individual thing i'm not asking you to speak for all titans fans I, but. i'll go first on this one the, the team i hate the most is the baltimore ravens i hate them more than any okay other, other so you're going back you're going back with yeah. like ray lewis and all that i'm a 99 titans fan so like, okay, I've, seen okay. all, I've seen it all you know like, Rebels, man, we they literally stopped us from winning Super Bowls, man. Like we could have had multiple Super Bowls if it wasn't for them, like, you know. So that that's how I look at it. Man, uh, for me, and if we're, we're sticking AFC South division, it's it's between the Colts and and the Texans for me for right now, just because Texans keep bringing up the Oiler days, and the Colts can't never let go of those old Super Bowls back. They just keep bringing those up. But we got those. I'm tired of hearing. When was the last time y'all won one? When was y'all when y'all competitive? Luck has left and been gone, and y'all ain't been able to figure this out. So I just I, I hate how the how the Colts constantly bring up the past rather than what they're currently doing. And then the Texans just don't seem to want to let go of the Oiler, Oilers, even though they shoot them off and out to Tennessee. I'm originally a Houston Oilers fan, so okay. I moved with them to Tennessee because I'm from Oklahoma. So 
Okay. I, was, I was an Oilers fan. And when they moved to Tennessee, I was like, well, I'm just going with my team anyway to Tennessee. So I've been here for the long haul. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, man. Uh, I hate every team equally. <laughs> yeah, I do too. You, probably I can't, you probably can't tell because of my Twitter, but the Texas <laughs> fans, they just saying the most right now. So I got to direct my attention towards the Texas fans. But other than that, hate every one of them equally. I mean, I hate the Texans. I mean, it's self-explanatory. It's the Texans. You know everything that's involved with that right there. Uh, the Colts, they kicked our ass for a bunch of years. And I was so freaking happy to finally get some get some sweeps against them here recently, man. And I'm not going to lie. When we got swept uh, this past season, I was kind of bitter about it. But I wasn't as bad as I thought I was going to be because I was looking at the Colts fans celebrating. I was like, well, you could tell it, it, it's been some bad times around that. They celebrating sweeps against the Titans. And um, the Jaguars, man, the Jaguars, I just feel like Jaguar fans, they be beside themselves. They ain't like they ain't the worst. They ain't the worst historical team. Uh, they ain't the worst uh, team historically in this uh, division. I mean, I would say the Houston Texans because they ain't never made a division. They ain't never made it out of the division, uh, the divisional round of the playoffs. But it's Jacksonville, even even with them making it further in the playoffs than the Houston Texans, it's Jacksonville. It's just too much losing going on down there in Jacksonville, and yeah. they get beside themselves every time they win over six games. We got yeah, the, it's, uh, definitely, it's definitely between the Texans and the, and the Jays when it comes it to changes. the worst. And the kids <laughs> like get in there if they want. Yeah, yeah and I'm with Morocco, man. All of them, are, I I hate all y'all equally, man. Because <laughs> y'all all three get it, man. All three get on nerves, man. Like it's like as soon as y I don't know what it is about our franchise. It like it's like as soon as one of y'all get good, y'all only come for us. Like it's like why, <laughs> what do we do, y'all? <laughs> Well, I mean, you took you took the football team for one. I mean that that would be that would be the first. I mean, I, I mean, we could start there and then we can work yeah. down. I would say. Oh, you uh, pushed them away, and yeah, he well, just welcomed really them with open arms. And then you got uh, Amy Adams, man. Amy, Amy Adams. I call her Amy Adams Stank. Uh, <laughs> oh. We got we got Amy That's Adams old. Stank sitting there obsessing over this blue. Although I kind of think the Texans blew the cover. Um, they're gonna release the uniforms in like 13 days. I I saw them. Um, that I, I feel like they kind of blew the cover on the blue thing. If they would have just kind of gone a little bit under the radar, then maybe they could have could have gotten a little smoother in there. But I, I know you guys. I, I I'm actually intrigued to hear what y'all say about the uniforms. For sure. Oh, okay, so y'all 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 must be whipping out the baby blue. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> hey, we'll see. I can't. I can't. We had to, they made us like sign NDAs. It was stupid. Oh, but okay, uh, okay. Okay. John McClain, who's big like can type. Titans connection. He went on and right after he saw it, he was like, Oh, these uniforms are lovely. I saw, I was like, Dude, why are you saying anything if you can't say anything? So yeah, they're going to release them in 13 days. So we'll see. I so will say, though, I, I'm yeah, not yeah. a huge fan of those ones that I see. Those little ones, they got leaked. Them little the white leaked. ones, they're, they're better than the other ones. They're all right. They're okay. They're, I mean, they're not, they're not like awesome. They're, they're, they're a little bit better, I guess, than the original. I mean, they damn sure didn't look good in that model. I don't know what that model was doing. Uh, the kickers would have been giving him wedgies. I, I don't know what the hell. Yeah, that, yeah, that looked like somebody they got off JV. Bro, you should have seen when they when they brought him out. So we were there, and um, there was four guys like that. He wasn't even the smallest one. And they're wearing, like, like small socks and stuff, and they brought out the uniform. So it's pretty crazy. Hey, if y'all want to get in, I put the link at the top. It's at the YouTube. If y'all want to come through uh, and defend the honor of the Texans, uh, we can do that. Um, we have a uh, super chat from Jay Games. Uh, rank the AFC South QBs. If y'all don't start with CJ, y'all got y'all got to at least start with CJ, even with the skepticism. Come on, we're not we're not bringing that kind of heat, are we? Oh, uh, Will Levis, uh, number one for me. Nah, nah, nah. I'm gonna I'm gonna be I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real about it. Uh, number one, obviously, CJ Stroud, man. I mean. As much as uh, trash we talk about him, I mean, we can't discredit what he done as a rookie. So, C.J. Stroud, number one. Number two, uh, who we got? Hmm. This is where the problem comes into play. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Yeah, so. You're not going to give it to Trevor? I'm going to have to give it to Trevor by default. 
Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah. I think that's fair. Just because, yeah, because he's been around. He's been around longer. Uh, he's achieved more than Will Levis or and uh, Anthony Richardson. So yeah, Trevor Lawrence too. Uh, three. I'm gonna have to go with Will Levis. Okay. Because of the simple fact that he played more than Anthony Richardson this year, and I feel like uh, some of his wins were more impressive than uh, Richardson's. And uh, only re- reason I'm really putting Richardson down there as four is because I mean he didn't make it through the whole season. I mean I I hated when he went down. Against Dude, he the never did though. Like that was the thing that bothered me about him last year because we were having discussions about him and everybody's talking about Bryce Young. Bryce Young's always hurt. It's like man, he missed one game. Anthony Richardson had a knee surgery. He had a concussion. He hurt his knee dancing. Like he missed the game on a Friday night because he because mm. he hurt his knee dancing. We asked Pierce about that. So that's that's always been kind of the knock on Anthony Richardson though. I do think though they benefit because he wasn't on the field as much because yeah. I, I think uh, he's yeah. the kind of guy that you, you can maybe catch on to a little bit. Although Steichen, I think Steichen's kind of probably the best offensive ma- mastermind right now in the, in the division. But I do think the Colts kind of in a weird way benefit this year that Richard, that you didn't get to see as much of him. And right. I'll say this about Richardson. Um, he kind of surprised me because I was, you know, I was looking for him to, you know, start off real, real slow. I honestly said that Gardner Minshew should have started right out the gate. Maybe they make the playoffs if he does, but they decided to put Anthony Richardson out there, and uh, he didn't look all too bad for me. I think I think he would have got it together had he um uh, had he uh stayed uh for the remainder of the season. Yeah. yeah so do y'all agree with his list? Is that a solid yeah, list? Yeah. Y'all? I think- I, I had the same list as him. I, I do feel like that. And, and I obviously, I think the, the right now cemented, you know what I'm saying, with uh, C.J. Stroud, number one, and, and to me, number two is Trevor Lawrence. You know I mean? Trevor Lawrence has also had a very good uh, second year. His third year is kind of average, you know what I'm saying? But we'll see what he does this fourth year. I mean, he did kind of downgrade a receiver, so we'll see. He's going to have to really ball out this year for, them to, for him to get paid like he wants to get paid. Uh, number three, I'm gonna have to definitely go with Will Levis, man. I just feel like, man, Will Levis is just a better AR. AR is a good passer. He has a strong arm, and he he's an elite runner. But at the outside of that, like, man, I need more consistency from him. Even when I, even if you watch both of them in college, I felt like Will Levis to me was better in college than Anthony Richardson. Anthony Richardson played at the University of Florida, who gets five and four star players, while Levis is playing in Kentucky when he's nothing but three stars. You know what I'm saying? Like, Kentucky don't have more talent than Florida. That, you put Will Levis at Florida, man, I felt like he could have, you could have seen that how good he could have been. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I'm gonna put Will Levis at number three. Leonard, you, you gonna go on that list or you can put CJ at two? You're gonna embrace no, the smoke a little I, bit. No, I I still hold this list a little bit. I am I'm I, I wanna kind of flip Will and Trevor a little bit, but like they said, Trevor has done a little bit more, but I think Trevor has already gotten figured out. I think that's why this third year has been what it is for him and moving forward. I I don't only think Trevor Lawrence has got figured out, I think Doug Peterson has got figured out too. So I don't see them really improving, but I got to go off of the now. And Will Levis has, what, like eight, nine games compared to Trevor Lawrence's three seasons. So Will Levis still got a lot to prove. We're excited about what he has, but he still has a lot to prove. To really, I'm not really that excited about that. Well, we're excited that we finally have a guy that can be the guy that we still have to work. So for so long, we've just had stepping stone tier quarterbacks. The guys is just getting us through until we find the guy. This is the first time since Mariota we kind of feel like the guy has the potential to be the guy. Do we know if he's the guy yet? Don't know. But he sure looks like he has the potential to shape out to be the guy if he can be coached right and and, and groomed right to what we believe he can be. You know what I call it? You know what I call I call Will Levis Gosh Allen. I call him Gosh Allen. <laughs> <laughs> I call him Gosh Allen. That's, that's what I call uh, Will Levis. I think we got a fan that wants to weigh in. Let's see. Uh, DJ uh, Amazings. Uh, go ahead. You're on with the Titans Coliseum guys. Go ahead, man. First thing I got to say, the Tennessee fans, hey, I'm, I'm not a hater. I'm not a hater. I'm just saying AMC South. That's always what South. a hater says before he hates, though. Let's be honest about that. <laughs> it's all good, man. Um, it's all good, bro. I agree how you put it in order with the quarterbacks. Landry, what's up? I, I watch your show all the time. First time, Vera. Um, I'm going to say this, and, you know, I'm going to make a prediction, and I'm going to say that Tennessee will be a problem out for what he said. Um. 
I think CJ's kind of been figured out a little bit, but I think he's going to tweak what he does. Um, and to Jacksonville, they just like nobody. They're not even relevant to, you know, the AMC South to me. Um, and I would say that everybody that we have on the team so far, I do think we're going to go deep into the fall and finally get to the second round of the playoffs. And I mean, Landry, what do you, I mean, what do you, what do you think of that? This, I mean, your opinion. Yeah, I appreciate you for coming through. I, I think it is going to be a battle. Um, and I and I think that, you know, go we we can elaborate on the CJ thing. I, I, I do think that, you know, had the Texans not won the division and they hadn't won that game against Indianapolis, like would would the excitement be as high? Because I don't necessarily think it should go down, but I but I do think you can point to a couple of plays. The the Colts drop the pass. Uh if they don't drop the pass, you don't make the playoffs. Uh if the Titans don't beat the Jags instead of hosting Cleveland. Uh, a team that you got a good look at a few year, uh, a few weeks earlier um, and got your ass whooped, but we're, we're able to adjust off that. You're in Buffalo and you're playing on a Tuesday. So uh, there's there's a lot of ifs. Hell, if Dalton Schultz doesn't catch that pass that Case Keenum closed his eyes and threw up against y'all, um, then you know you might it might not have happened. So I I, I like the excitement. I, I do always like to tap the brakes a little bit because. I mean, we've just seen it so many times where when you anoint someone, whether it's earned or not, it can be dangerous. Like Jacksonville was supposed to be, you know, what that was, and they, they kind of took a step back. So uh, I guess I'll let you, Leonard, elaborate on the CJ thing, but I think that's basically what you're saying is one year doesn't really anoint someone as, you know, the end-all, be-all. I do like what they've done around him, though, this offseason. Yeah, yeah. I, I can agree with that. I agree with that. And, and you know what I'm saying? Look, you and the Texas fans, they have done this offseason. This has been an A-plus offseason for y'all. You know what I'm saying? And I understand the hype. You know what I'm saying? I understand that y'all want to talk to y'all trash. Y'all want to do, do say this, that, and the other. But just be mindful that CJ, we, we really didn't have film on him like that for us to, to stop what he does. Now, will I say that he's just going to fall off a cliff? He's going to throw 20 interceptions? You no. Know? But 23 and 5, like, you know what I'm saying? It's hard for him to replicate that. Now, he may throw more TDs, but I do think that he's going to throw a little bit more interceptions because defense are going to have tape on what he does. You know what I'm saying? More so then you know what i'm saying then, then him just falling off a cliff i just think he's going to throw a little bit more picks than what he had last year you know yeah last year like there's so many <clears throat> there's so many variables to what the texan success was last year for me and it's not that it can't be duplicated but that's the question now can you duplicate it a lot of people can do one years we've seen it jacksonville went out there and did it then it was oh, oh it's always been jacksonville it's it's always no it wasn't y'all showed up one year then y'all disappeared like everybody thought y'all was gonna do it ain't never been y'all y'all never show up so it's not just getting hype over one year. New head coach, new new QB, new offensive coordinator. Nobody knows what you're really, really going to do. And that's what I'm kind of optimistic about the Titans this year. Yeah, you've seen Will Levis, but Will Levis has a little bit of film out there. New head coach, new defensive coordinator, new entire scheme of everything. We can catch some people off guard. Texans caught some guys off guard last year, and that's on their fault for playing. You never, ever think that you're going to win a game based off of what a team did the year before. You had a second place schedule that made it a little bit easier, but now you got a harder schedule this year. Now you got tape, not good tape, preseason, regular season, postseason tape on a guy that is new that took everybody by storm. They're going to study that because they know that you're going to have to go through Houston at some point in time and play them. You're going to see CJ. So it's just, can he do it next year? Can you take the next step? Because we saw in that playoffs, once you get a little pressure on CJ, he starts to not make the right decision. So is he going to turn that page and improve next year? That's the big question for me. And I, I'll say this, though, Landry, and this is just for all the Texas fans that's in this in this chat. You're about to play the Josh Allens. You're about to play the Lamar Jacksons, the, the Patrick Mahomes. You're going to so you're gonna be able to look at the, what CJ is against them. You know what I'm saying? You get to see that. Like, we got to see that with Ryan Tannehill and Derrick Henry back in the day. You know, when we had when we were playing first-place schedules. And we overcame all that. We beat we beat the Chiefs. We beat the Bills. You know what I'm saying? So we we I want to see what you guys do against the, the the best quarterbacks in this conference. And you guys will be this season. You know what I'm saying? With that with that first place schedule, man. First place schedule is tough, man. I think you could uh do you, who y'all play the Cowboys? Who who won the? Uh, I think we playing the NFC East. Yeah, you got, you got yeah. The, you got the Cowboys. You got the Ravens. Uh, mm -hmm. You got the Bills. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, we play, yeah. no, we play the AS, the NFC North, but we play one team from the NFC East. And yeah. wherever you finish there, guys, we play the uh the Commanders. So 
got the Lions. Yeah, it's it's a it's a tough ass schedule for sure. Uh, they want y'all to rank the uh, AFC South head coaches. Hey, coaches. Oh, uh, uh, I mean, Ooh. it's kind of it's kind of like the quarterback situation, man. It, it's damn near si- similar to it. So, I mean, we're gonna have to go D'Amico Ryan number one, man. Even though this was his rookie season, he came in just like C.J. Stroud and had a hell of a rookie season. And um, number two, Doug Peterson. I mean, shoot, man, the man that won a Super Bowl with Nick Foles. I mean, that's all I need to say right there. And number three, I'm going to have to give it to uh, what's it? What's it name? Steichen. Steichen. Yeah, hey, he's disrespecting me. I, I I feel like he did a really good job last year. Yeah, yeah he, he, he 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 did. But Plus Philadelphia I mean, kind of fell off, man. They weren't really like Hurts. I, I, I don't. There might have been other factors. They 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 kind of missed he, him. He's very innovative, man. I, I one thing I noticed with him, especially when we played him, because like we were just doing the same stuff that we all do to, to the Colts when we played. And in the second game we played him, we took away their run game and said Garner Minshew beat us, and it was like he was adjusting as the game progressed. And that was my problem I had with Mike Vrabel. I'm like, dude, adjust to what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? Don't just keep staying. Team deep, you know what I'm saying? He gonna pick it apart, and you know, yeah, you gonna have to do, do. You just gonna have to. You just gonna have to do it. I mean, that that that's my thing about it. I mean, if we were sitting up over here, uh, talking about Shane Steichen and Doug Peterson with similar resumes, I probably would lean towards uh, Steichen, but Doug Peterson had done it before, man. He came to Jacksonville, took them from the dumpster to the playoffs. And uh, mm-hmm. that's what I'm looking for Steichen to do. That's why I got him at number three and uh, number four. I mean, it is what it is. We got a brand new head coach, uh, Brian Callahan. He hasn't proved anything in this division yet. I mean, that's what it's going to boil down to this season. What can you do within this division? I mean, we we went to AFC championship games and – divisional playoff games as the number one seed and all that with Mike Vrabel. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold him to that standard in his first year. I'm just not gonna do it. I'm I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna be reasonable. For Callahan, I just want the offense to look like a modern offense. Yeah. I want us to score 30 points in some games. The games okay. where we should score 30 points in we need to be scoring 30 points in the game. We need to be taking advantage of weak secondaries. And that was my problem. How are y'all uh, going to do that when y'all pay Calvin Ridley the way you paid him, man? What the, what the hell were y'all thinking, man? What was that? Calvin I saw y'all getting excited about that. What are, you, what are y'all doing? I, how are you going to talk about that when y'all traded for Diggs the way y'all did? Void contracts and still pay him his guaranteed money. Yo, bro, how are we, we going to do a one-year uh, deal on for a two-second round pick? The Diggs move was yeah. they got an extra second-round pick with Minnesota. They traded back 19 spots. They got their second, and then they they basically took out a house loan for Diggs. They didn't like trade. They still have as many draft picks. Uh, but I would rather have Diggs for one year than make Calvin Ridley the sixth highest paid receiver in the league. You don't think Come so? Come on, guys. Can I can't support that. It's Come on. free agency, yeah. though. Uh, I, I mean, mean you don't uh, have to overpay. Hey, you don't have to overpay and plus two. Everybody, everybody overpaid because you guys definitely overpay for his ease out share, bro. Like, come on, yeah. bro. Like, okay, this, now here we go. This, back is, back this is what I want to hear right here. here. <laughs> this is your <laughs> question. Uh, are y'all going to miss Autry or, or Al Shire more? Uh, Autry. Ooh. Easy, yeah. Autry. Yeah, <laughs> Autry. Autry is good, but he he's not Autry, man. Autry, that dude had what eleven say? Yeah, I gonna replace yeah. that in year one. <laughs> year one, we can we right. can. Man, come on, man. You look at Tennessee. So you don't Titans. like Shire? I like Shire, but as a Tennessee Titan fan, I've been a fan since '99, bro. We've never had bad linebacker play, bro. <laughs> we never since Keith Bullock to Alshier, man. Our linebackers always been good, bro. And Shahir was here one year. Autry was here multiple years doing work for us multiple years, being that guy there for us. So that's going to hurt a little bit more rather than, yeah, we want to share to stay there and, and come around with you, uh, uh, what he's done for the Titans. But yeah, yeah, uh, yeah glaive out. You did? Okay. Yeah, cool, yeah cool, you cool, dove cool. out a little bit. Um, the, the GM, when you hear him talk about uh, – Autry, I've never heard. I, I, you almost had to leave a damn tie on the door uh, when he when he talked about him. This this was Casario. I actually happened to have this on the uh, on the roadcaster. Just, just listen to this. This it, have y'all ever heard Casario talk? Y'all y'all familiar? It's kind of boring guy. 
Yeah. yeah. Patriot, little bit, yeah. Listen, listen to him talking about Achi. I don't know what's going on here. Um, I would say specific to Danico. I mean, this guy's a badass. I mean, this guy's a junkyard dog. Like, if you go into a dark alley, like, you want this guy behind you. Like, this is a bad MFer. I mean, and a really good football player who cares about football. And, and we've had a play against him over the last couple of years and, you know, Tennessee, and then he was in Indianapolis, but you know, glad he's on our side and, you know, we're excited about um, what potentially he could bring to our front. Yeah. Pretty excited about that. Uh, yeah. Man, I'm like, I, I can't believe y'all, we got to go back to this Ridley thing. I'm, I'm not going to let you deflect by taking shots at, 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 at Shire. Come on. And how much did you pay if, Hunter? If Jacksonville would have done that. Y'all would have been roasting their ass for that contract with, with Ridley, I feel like y'all also liked it because Jack, y'all, y'all kind of swooped in on Jacksonville. Yeah, Same I thought thing with the, uh, we with the paid Steve extra. Thing. We we overpaid to take him from Jacksonville. That that's that I feel like that we knew we were going to make the Jags worse, and we we're going to yeah. get better. You know what I'm saying? It was one of those. You know, uh, that's what we paid for. Okay. And, and Ridley came out and he did perform good out last year, you know, and he performed good with Trevor Lawrence in that Jags offense, like still a thousand yard receiver, still the guy that came out and has a good football. And then still a guy, everybody's like, he's 29, but he don't have two seasons of football on his body neither. So he's not a true 29 year old. So he has all the knowledge. Oh, you're doing it too. You're, you're, you're doing what he did. did. So it's good because of, yes, we gave them the same contract that Jacksonville offered them. We had the same exact offers on the table, and he chose us over Jacksonville. So that that helps with this thing a little bit why he's here. But we, we have D-Hop. We have Calvin Ridley now. Those are two guys that are actually – made our wide receiver room better than we've ever had in many, many, many years of a wide receiver room. So now I am excited about having Calvin Ridley. We, I, we paid a little bit over, but you do for free agency. I mean, how much did y'all pay Hunter? And that dude stays injured all the time too. So two years, man, two years, 48. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be real though. I, I like David Long more than I like uh, David Long and Jayon Brown more than I like Aziz, man. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man. I mean, I'm being, being real, bro. Also, man, y'all also pay overpay for Joe Mixon, bro. Like, y'all gotta come on, bro. Like, he not no elite running back, bro. <laughs> like, I mean, he he look, they they wanted Saquon and you know, Singletary found a deal. So they they just brought in Mixon. I think he's an upgrade. I like Joe Mixon. Yeah, he's I, I better than Singletary. Well, the biggest problem the Texans have, and they've they've had this even when they were good, and, and I don't know how this happens, but they don't have multiple backs that can make plays. Like even last year, like Damian Pierce was unplayable at, at the end of the year. He just didn't really find the system. So like you look around the league, like there's two, three running backs making plays. They don't really have that. So they gotta like they, they can't rely on mixing too much. They gotta figure something out. Unfortunately for them, this is kind of a weak ass draft. Um for running backs, but y'all, y'all signed Tony Pollard. What are we doing there? <laughs> Tony Pollard, just, like, I mean, because like he sounds like y'all, because he's got he's got a little bit of that little bit of that Memphis swing with him. Yeah, he's like he from Memphis, man. Shout out, shout out to Memphis, man. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so the thing with signing Tony Pollard is we're not trying to be predictable out here. I mean, that was one of our <laughs> biggest issues with Mike Vrabel and um, his his offensive geniuses that he hired. Well, y'all uh, brought in uh, Tim Kelly, and that was Bill O'Brien's uh, right hand man for eight years. So we know about. Yeah, him. I mean, oh, it was just man. mad. It was just mad predictable, and it was predictable because I mean the way they were calling games, but it was predictable too because of the running back that we had, Derrick Henry. Shout out to Derrick Henry though, because I'm not one of these ungrateful ass fans or whatever that's that was just. Oh yeah, let's get Derrick Henry out of here so we can start throwing the football. No, I'm not none of them. I appreciate Derrick Henry. Hell, win the game however you can win the game. But I, I got to be honest. With Derrick Henry on the field, you already know what's coming. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he, he's going to get the ball, and he's going to try to run through some people. So now that we got the combination of Tajay Spears and uh, Tony Pollard, I mean, teams are not going to know unless we just give them a – obvious formation or whatever to where they know we're passing the ball like if we go uh five wide receivers or if we send three tight ends out there something like that just the formation that gives it away i mean yeah honestly yeah we're not gonna I, be predictable this season i'll say this though i'll say this though like and I, obviously derrick henry he's my all favorite type of picture derrick henry right here sitting on the throne <laughs> you know what i'm saying and i just look at it like this man uh I, I I hate to see him go, but at the same time, it is a blessing in disguise because me we relied on him for every little thing, 
And it was like we it, it didn't matter who what team we put, we could play playing the number one rush defense. We're gonna run the ball 30 times, man. And until Derrick Henry beats this team, we either we're gonna go down Henry or we're gonna win the game giving the ball to Derrick Henry. And I'm like, we can't do that and think we're gonna get to a Super Bowl doing that. You know what I'm saying? Granted, he was an amazing running back. He's uh, to me, a top ten running back of all time. I don't care what, you you can argue it. I, I feel like he's good enough to be put in that conversation. But I will say this though: with us signing Tony Pollard and having Tajay Spears, there's going to be way more versatility, man. With, and it's going to help out our quarterback tremendously with him in the past, man. With versatility, you know, what I'm saying throwing it out the backfield, he can go out in the slot, man, and run some routes. You know, what I'm saying we've never had that at running back, even with Chris Johnson. Chris Johnson wasn't even doing that, you know. So. I just look at it like this, man. I, I'm excited for what's, what's coming with life after Henry. I think we nailed life after Henry. You know what I'm saying? Because now we have a one-two punch. We don't have a certain set plays for whatever running back that comes in and it's on the field, you know. So who's the, who's the backup quarterback? Backup Mason quarterback, Rudolph. Mason Rudolph. Okay, there you go. So he's going to start, what, like 10 games? Like 11? Nah, nah, when's Levis getting, when's uh, Levis getting 10? Probably. Hey? He probably going to uh, start as many games as uh, we, uh, what's the other guy's name? I done forgot him all. Davis Mills? <laughs> nah. Uh, Case Keenum? Our, the Titans quarterback, <laughs> man. Uh, <laughs> golly, Malik Willis, man. Good God. Uh, what's he up to? That's, what's that's a sad up situation, <laughs> man. That's a sad situation. Bro. I hey. mean, I wish him the best, but, I mean, it, it's just obvious that it, it's not going to work for him. Maybe he can go somewhere to where they can um maybe fit the offense around him or something. I think the Malik Willis thing kind of uh we, we we lost uh oh, we lost man. him. I yeah. guess I guess too much Malik Will Willis talk. Ah yeah uh, we're too much Malik Willis talk man. <laughs> yeah <laughs> we, we we lost y'all um yeah. on that what about the Sneed signing y'all 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 are excited about the sneed thing uh, i'm assuming because he was going to be a colt and y'all y'all like taking guys from opponents <laughs> why not if you can't you know it's it's good to get players you want it's even better to get players you want and when rivals was the number ones to about to go get them too so it's just always nice taking those little sneaks away too so um i'm excited about sneed especially y'all got digs um Sneed locks down digs he ain't had a good game against Sneed yet and everybody's like well you know Sneed can't cover all three of us well we got uh Cheetah Bay Awuzie over there too and then we got Roger McCreary who can sit there and play slot now so he can cover Tank uh uh Cheetah Bay can sit there and cover Nico Collins and then Sneed can sit there and cover Diggs we're good on wide receiver this ain't the old Titans where you used to be able to throw because our dudes couldn't cover white on rice okay so we we we're going to be better this year I'm excited about Sneed and what we got in the DB room Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. What are we doing in the draft? What what do y'all got going in the draft? Draft, man. Uh, like I was telling you before we went on, man. Uh, if all is there for us, I think we go out. But if there's a situation to where Alt and Malik uh, Malik Neighbors is on the board, I mean, they might like Roma Doozy. I mean, I haven't heard them say too much of anything about him. I don't too much like him, but. Who, who's to say Rand Carthon and uh, Brian Callahan don't? So, I mean, if if a wide receiver is sitting on the board outside all, I don't know. But I feel like they're going to go with the safe pick with all, man. They, they got to. Yeah they, yeah, they got to. I mean, it's the sure thing, man. I say this, though, and, you know, um, I, I, I'm I I'm with Morocco when it comes if you go to any of our podcasts, man, I've been all this, all that, you know, and I, I just look at it like this, though, man. And, and when you go look at some of our – some of, like from our GM and our head coach, man, and every time they go up to the, the podium to talk, man, I've even had – we've even had Mike Keat, the voice of the Titans, get on Twitter and talk about this. Like they, they are not talking about <laughs> linemen when they go up there. Every time they talk about the number seven P, they say, well, it's a lot of – uh talent there at the, at the tackle position or there's this then the other but man we need playmakers we need playmaking it's like every time they talk it seems like they're gonna go receiver you know what i'm saying so if they go receiver i'm gonna i'm gonna be at the, the draft party with these, these two guys on here 
Okay. And I'm gonna be I'm gonna be high, I'm gonna be happy. I'm gonna be happy whatever they do, man, because I just feel like there is it's so many places we can go because there's gonna be so many quarterbacks going ahead of us. See, our yeah. draft party's day two, so we're having ours Friday. I'm, <laughs> I'm hosting, we're hosting one for this yes, training. Wow. We got a we got a bar that uh on Saturday, like kind of a reflect and enjoy type of joint going on on Saturday, but the actual Texans draft party, they they moved it to Friday because there's no first round picks so they yeah. traded back hey, at least y'all ain't got to worry about work Saturday morning with most of y'all anyway <laughs> yeah but i always like day two though i'm always intrigued I, it, it seems like and, and y'all can correct me if i'm wrong y'all were kind of y'all were kind of having the same kind of chatter and there was a popular name um in y'all circle uh with uh tavondre sweat and then and that was a guy that you know texans fans were talking about obviously a little bit has changed there um <laughs> When would y'all take Tavondre Sweat? Because for us, it went from okay, uh, because I got I actually got the text message with like the uh report, and at first it said okay, two o'clock on Sunday. I was like, okay, my man must have been having brunch. Then it got discovered, okay, he got booked at two o'clock. He actually got arrested at four. And I was like, okay, well, all right, maybe that's a little bit, you know, more traditional. Then it comes out that he's kind of a partier and all this type of stuff. And then it comes out that the damn car flipped. So it's I, I don't know how to look at it because I always try to I always try to sympathize with young men that are 22 years old. And you have that you, on one hand, you say 20 days before the draft, the guy got busted. What an idiot, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. But you could also say, you know, this is so low that maybe this is where it snaps for him. When would y'all take sweat? And, and is it is it accurate that he was like a popular name in the second round? You want to take that file style? Yeah, I really think he was a first round grade coming into this before all this, yeah. this happened. How he was performing, how he's playing, man, he was definitely a first round grade. Looked really well. We was excited about him. Like, hey, <clears throat> hey, if he's there in the second round, we're picking early in the second round. If he's there, we got to get it, replace Autry with him. This is a guy we've been really high on. But now with these coming out, with the, the, the incident happening and then all these rumors or his personality and conduct that's come into question, it's like, man, this, this guy might be a third or fourth rounder. You can't really, you really can't take a risk on that guy especially in a draft class like this that have so many other guys that don't have character issues that don't have stunts like this happening and you've already seen some players that are rookies happen this in the league with with Rashid Rice having issues this offseason um uh what's the guy out there um in in Baltimore um how rookie guy flowers, flowers. Safe flowers out there had his incident so you don't really want to bring in any too much extra noise in a in a sports locker room where there's already so much media especially if you're a big market too and for us as titans you don't want to touch them too early because we already just had the I isaiah wilson shit not too long ago that still haunts titans oh, fans so we don't want to deal dude, with that, that again. Dude, something else. Yeah, so, oh, you Lord. know it has to be a third or fourth what did he do on the time. boat what was it when he was in trouble i, I don't remember it was like strippers or something right Trippers and uh, he done done so much foolishness, man. I done forgot about a lot of it. I mean, before I think it was either before or during uh his rookie training camp, he had uh went to a TSU uh party or something. That's right. He jumped, jumped out, out of the window. building or something, right? Yeah, it was it, it was something crazy, man. And uh, like Firestone said, man, for a team like us, we don't need to touch anything like that anytime soon. For multiple reasons. Now, what if it's the fourth round, though? Because this is what fourth, I came up. Because I could see him going round, to I could, I could deal with the fourth round, but second round with the Titans, I mean, we don't even know the first round moves. Say they do go wide receiver in the first round. Then in the second round, we most definitely have to address. Now, y'all got to hit on that running. second round pick because y'all took a trash quarterback last year to start off the second round. So y'all got to Y'all got to recover from that. Y'all got to recover from Josh Allen, man. You <laughs> can't have too many of those. Y'all hoping. Y'all saw that arm. Y'all saw him throwing them deep hey. balls with a flick of the wrist. They ain't even throwing his body into those throws yet. Y'all don't even know how. Maybe y'all consider Bo Nix or something there. Maybe Bo Nix slides too. Nah, nah, you nah. You know what it is, man. We can't wait to see y'all face when y'all find out that uh, your quarterback is CJ Prescott, man. That's exactly <laughs> what we can't <laughs> We can't oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> they have done a good job. All these weapons, man, just so we can sell y'all. They they have done a good job of surrounding CJ, though. They, I, th I still think they need some more weapons, but they have done a good job of uh, surrounding CJ. I, th I think they need they need to attack the offense uh, for sure. But it'll be it'll be interesting. So, who's the popular name? Like second round? Do y'all even? I mean, y'all are focused on the first dude, round right uh, now, huh? There's a lot, we, man. We, we, like, I've seen somebody say Darius Robinson. I mean, I've, I've heard Chris Braswell. I've heard, you know, Troy Franklin. I've heard 
Franklin's Baby nice, McConkey. man. Franklin's nice. Yeah, yeah. Lad McConkey. You know what I'm saying? I've seen. We done seen all type. Of, every receiver that goes second round. Ad Mitchell. You know what I'm saying? All the all these guys, man. Keon Coleman. Xavier you know, Lincoln uh, might be there. I mean, it, yeah, it, 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 it's it's so, yeah. I'm honestly leaning towards uh Braden Fitz, man. I've been watching him here yeah. lately, man. And uh we need to we need to replace Archer. I mean, big Jeff, man, he he gonna need some help on that defensive line. And um I just think I just think our fellow Titan fans, they need to be prepared for anything in the draft. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of them that so sold on us getting a wide receiver or getting an offensive lineman, you need to have an open mind to this thing, man, because, I mean, we could go multiple directions. Yeah, uh, I I just don't know about the QB. That's kind of my thing, and I don't I, – I don't, we really don't know about the coach either, and that's that's kind of like – that's not even a bad thing, you know? Like, it could – we don't we don't know uh, what he is or isn't. Like, I think if you had Shane Steichen working with the quarterback, you'd be like, okay, you feel good about that, but – we we don't know about the coach. What was that like? Um, Vrabel gets dropped. Uh, Amy Adams Stank says y'all want to get out in front of the uh, in front of the search, and then y'all y'all end up with Taylor. Was was Taylor the popular name at the time? Where where were we leaning there? Oh, I mean, with Callahan. 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 Okay, so y'all are all in on him. Well, it, it it at least so far, like listening to their press conferences, at least for me, listening to him and listening to Denar Wilson, and especially today, like they had a press conference and Nick Coles, man, Nick Coles won me over today to the way he was talking about offense and our schemes and how we're going to do certain things. Uh, it's definitely a lot better than feeling like, okay, we're just going to run Henry 30, 40 times a damn game and, and hope that he breaks out a bunch of runs and, and saves us in the end. So it's like, okay, this feels like new style. This feels like it's going to be more entertaining. It feels like this is going to be more air raid type offense. So yes, so far we're sold on, but it, it it's easy to sell us now. We, we still want to see you execute it. It's easy to say these things and you communicate well, you talk football well. Now let's see how the players actually take it in and transition that onto the field. The best thing you got, though, one of them, and I, I don't know how good of a head coach he's going to be, but you got one of the best offensive line coaches of all time. I mean, that's just that's just been proven time after time after yeah, time. Yeah, that's much uh, needed, man. We we needed pop. an offensive line coach, man, because I mean, for so many seasons we've been dealing with Keith Carter, and then when Keith Carter finally got fired, Vrabel, he decided to promote Keith Carter's assistant, which, I mean, golly, you just hear players talk about Keith Carter, and the vibe I get from them is Keith Carter don't know what the hell he's doing out there. And Verbal goes and promotes his assistant. What do you think the assistant is going to do? So Damn. I think um, by us having Bill Callahan in the building, a much respected offensive line coach. I mean, that's going to make things better for us right off the bat. You got a real teacher in the building. Yeah, he's the best for sure. Uh, Jacob Hyatt says that Will Levis is the next Jeff George. Uh, oh, so. he's saying five dollars. That's an insult to Jeff George. That was my dad's. One my dad's favorite that, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's an insult. That's an insult to Jeff George. Terrible take, man. Okay. <laughs> I'll say this about I mean, Levis. Waste no money, and I just play. <laughs> I'll say this about Levis, though, man. I wasn't a fan of Levis when we drafted him. Should yeah, I? and I saw someone try to sell it on it. He was talking to you, and he. I was like, okay, what's he going to say? And he said, it must be that liquor that's speaking to me from like two weeks ago or something. He tried to make a sales <laughs> pitch on Levis. He's like, I hated Will Levis. And then, and I'm waiting for like a moment. And he's like, I don't know if it was the liquor that hit two weeks ago or whatever. I was like, yeah, that, that's probably what it would take. So well, I'll tell you about yeah, my, this is the best thing. Thing. You know, that's the best thing about the Will Anderson trade is that Y'all's dumbasses took Will Levis with that 33rd pick that we traded. So y'all indirectly, the Texans not only got the defensive rookie of the year and the offensive rookie of the year, they gave y'all one of the worst quarterbacks in the NFL and Will Levis. So that's, it was actually like a, a double edged sword. It's kind of like y'all talking about taking guys away. We gave y'all Gosh Allen. Will Elvis. No, you're hey, gonna, you're gonna be, be, you gonna be regretting that. I've, I've uh, never played for a quarterback to be good in, in my lifetime, bro. Because man, even I didn't want him, but man, the way our division rivals talk so bad about Will Levis, bro, it is crazy. He's Wack Mettenberger. Wack Mettenberger. 
Okay. <laughs> All right. Man, he gets that fire in him. He's different. We don't see what CJ Golf going to do. No, we don't see what CJ Golf. He's, 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 he's got that dumb fire Chris in him though because I remember in the game, the game where Case was there. I I remember I was sitting uh I was sit, I was sitting at the at the bar getting ready for uh for post and I saw him. He made like a badass play with his legs. I think he dove on like third and long or something like that. He made a badass play and I was like, "Watch, he's going to throw a pick here." He threw a pick like Two plays later, he's kind of feeling himself a little bit. It'll be interesting to see how they work with him. I just, I'm just, I was so terrified of the Texans liking him last year. Terrified. Yeah, yeah man. Well, well, like I said, I didn't want him, but I mean, got to support your guy. I mean, when he come to the team, I had to put all that to the side. And he actually turned out better than what I thought he was going to be. But what made me say that, ah, oh, yeah, this is a guy that we can at least see it. Uh, see it through with is the Miami game. Yeah. I mean, what he done in that Miami game? He started out. It was. I mean, that was a start, and it was like, damn. Okay, four touchdown passes. <laughs> then he kind of fell off, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, he, he did even in the Pittsburgh over. game. I mean, he 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 looked good in the Pittsburgh game. I mean, he took a beating, and he still kept us in the game. So, I mean, with these weapons uh, that we got right now, man, I, I'm really looking for him to make a make a significant jump like i can say what y'all want but we already heard what brady said about will levis brady said what he, he sees say? himself in inside of will levis and he sees brady and when will did levis. he say this and what he was did? he what was he on nothing we're not talking about <laughs> rogers and alopecia or you know that stuff or whatever he was what smoking. did he what did, when did brady say this he said that when he was coming into the draft, he's like, "This is a guy that doesn't get a lot of credit and a lot of." And he was that was that at Mark him. Rubin's party when they were when they were doing who knows what. <laughs> no, definitely not. no. He was on a podcast. I can't remember what podcast is. I, I'll pull it up. I'll have to find it for you. Okay, yeah. okay. So yeah. Many Do you think Brady's going to be a good uh, announcer? I don't know. I didn't think Tony Romo was going to be. Either, I, 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 I could see him being a Chris Collinsworth Jr. Okay, hey, not Jr. And with, <laughs> yeah, Chris Collinsworth Jr. and I. And I rock with Brady, man. He my goat, but uh, I think he's I everybody. Think he's go- yeah, I, I don't think he's made that sound like that was like a unique opinion. Brady's my. I goat. mean, he my he my goat. I mean, I can't say like, he's next the man goat because the some people look back. at the that fact was like, that, okay, that's a take right there. Yeah, yeah some people goat. look at the fact that you know he had Bill Belichick with him, and you know the tuck rule and all this old foolishness or whatever, man. But I respect Brady. So where are we? Uh, I, I want to play a little game with y'all because y'all can y'all can talk crap about the the Texans. So the the, the game I want to play is I'm going to go around the room and y'all tell me why why you think the Texans suck. Why do the Texans? We're going to go around the AFC South. Why do the Texans suck? We'll go we'll go clockwise. Uh, we'll, we'll start with you, Leonard. Why do the Texans suck? Uh, y'all know, ain't y'all's owner's name Steve Steve what, uh, McNair? Ain't that what it is? Kyle McNair. Kyle McNair, yeah, that's why. Because that the dude is still around. He still makes bad decisions. He still don't run everything. The Deshaun Watson fumble, the DeAndre Hopkins trade fumble. There's so many things. It's just it's the same reason why I don't have faith in Jacksonville. The head don't know what the hell it's doing. So everything that trickles down from the head just starts to fall off at some point. And it looks good for like a year or two, but it don't last. So until until ownership changes for me, I don't I don't see Jacksonville or Houston as getting anything on the right path. Oh God, Amy Adams stank, man. Hey, she's making moves. She's making bold and at least changing and adapting rather than being just like her dad. Hey, he's he's made some pretty he's made some pretty big moves. Morocco, why do the Texans suck? Man, the Texans suck, man, because they can't get out of their own way. I mean, like I mentioned, man, at some point you got to make it out of the divisional round of the playoffs, bro. Like y'all keep on going to the second round of the playoffs and getting knocked off by legitimate quarterbacks. And every time y'all go against a backup quarterback in the playoffs, you don't have no problem with them. So the Texans <laughs> suck because they can't make it out of the second round of the playoffs. Maybe if the if the playoffs were filled full of backups, the Texans could win some Super Bowls. RJ, why do the Texans suck? No, nah, y'all suck because man, it's like, what have y'all done? <laughs> what have y'all done to be to be talking the way that y'all talk, man? You know, and I look at it like this, man. 
hey, sooner or later, man, y'all y'all got to realize that you guys are our little brother, man. And oh, y'all come on. Little brother. Come on, man. Little, you don't even, you can't yeah. even say that with a straight face. Little, little brother, brother, man. It is what it is, man. Y'all have little brother syndrome, man. As soon as y'all oh, beat it, y'all celebrate like y'all win the Super Bowl, man. Uh, Young Costa says, Will Levis going to the Super Bowl this year. Uh, once he buys a ticket, happy sweeping. <laughs> See, there's the, there's the <laughs> I did lose to Case Keenum, though. I mean, hey, that, that had to have been that was that, that had a, the ghost of Case Keenum. It well, did surprise our, me. Our pass defense was just so horrible last year. We had guys that was just delusional in their coverage that couldn't be honest with themselves when they were having bad games and once they they was playing technically sound football. We had a guy that was just playing out of position that's just he's just not long enough to be trying to play number one and number two wide receivers he needs to be solidified to that slot position so our past defense was just horrible atrocious last year but this year i can't stress this enough to these texans fans because they think it's still a mike Vrabel team this is a completely different type of tech uh tennessee titans team that you're going to see that you've probably never seen before and we're going to catch a lot of people off guard because you're so used to the old ways and what's about to happen is going to be nothing like what the old ways used to be like. Go back to Gosh Allen. Why did the Colts suck? Man, Colts suck because they can't get out of the past. They still stuck on Peyton Manning era days. And they can't like most of y'all that are Colts fans talking shit right now didn't even see the damn Super Bowl. And y'all still talking shit about the Super Bowl. So I, that's that's why I just do something now. Do something now rather than holding on to the past. But the Colts suck because Jim Ursay is the owner of the team and Chris Ballard is the <laughs> GM. <laughs> I'm taking my yeah. okay, that was short and sweet. Uh, oh. And what, what can I say about the old ponies, man? They, I mean, they all they bro, they're so annoying, bro. Like they fans are just so stuck in the past, bro. They don't want to admit that they they franchise really don't care about winning the like he he don't he don't he's not even aggressive to try to win the Super Bowl right now. That lets me know that they that they're delu that their fan base is delusional. They they all they whenever they lose an argument they 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 bring up the Super Bowl ring. Like bro, y'all trash, bro. <laughs> let's be real, bro. Y'all trash, bro. Y'all living interesting. They're just kind of sitting love. back. Everyone's spending money. They're just kind of sitting back. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, why did the Jags suck? Oh, because they always think they run in something that they ain't running. They're they're like if if the Texans are our little brother. This is bonding because yeah. I think Texans fans are agreeing with y'all on this on Jags. The Jags is kind of an eye roll around here. Yeah. So if Texans is our little brothers, our, our damn the Jaguars got to be our step cousins that keep coming around and try to hang out. It's like, bro, you're not really a part. Like, would you just get away? You making us look bad every time you come around and you show up. I I just. Every they they don't form articulate uh arguments when it comes to football. And when you try to talk football with them, they don't it doesn't even sound like they know their team. They'll be talking about stuff it's like when did that even happen? So they're not even informed on their team, they just like talking shit, and it's so aggravating for a team that has sucked so many years and ain't won this south, but what two times they won the AFC South two times the whole time they've been here. So it's aggravating, yeah. Yeah, the Jags suck because they pop up like Jeepers Creepers. I mean, they sleep for 25 years and then they come out for one season and just dominate everything. And then they go right back in to hiding for another 25 years. I love that yeah. reference. I love that one. They, they really are the cicadas, though, bro. I ain't going to lie, man. They, they go on. You don't see them for a long time. Bro. And then they just pop up out the ground. Like, where the hell did the Jags come from? My thing <laughs> with the Jags is this, because y'all talk y'all talk about CJ. And, 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 I mean, I think that the overall thought is, you know, you can't crown someone after one year. But the, the thing about CJ that I've said is, and, and Jags fans have to be honest with themselves, if if I feel about CJ the way Jags fans feel about Trevor Lawrence two years from now, that sucks. Like that's that sucks because Trevor Lawrence is closer to, I think he's closer to like Dak Prescott, and that might actually be an insult to Dak Prescott than he than he than he'll ever be to like the Burrows and the Allens uh, and stuff like that. So that's that's the thing with the Jags. If, if when they drafted Trevor Lawrence. You would have told them that they'd be feeling this way three years from now. I, I think they would be very disappointed. Yeah, because you you expected like how everything was shaping out in the division. Oh, they were the doing game. a montage of Elway and Andrew Luck, and they they were doing like a montage of the best <laughs> quarterbacks as he was drafted. Literally, 
Yeah, no, it, it, it's we all kind of like this 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 year. We kind of expected all right. Jack should be the one team that has everything together. They got their QB. They got their coach that's been there. Those other three guys were Vrabel's kind of on a hot seat. We brought in Will Levis. We don't know who our QB is. Colts got a rookie. Uh, Texans got a rookie, and then just you slowly keep watching Jags just like not be what the hell they were supposed to be. And you're like. This was supposed to be y'all's year. Everybody's trying to rebuild and fix and retool shit, and y'all couldn't win the division when the other three teams are kind of in a rebuild. So I don't know what they're going to do with Trevor Lawrence over there. He, I don't know if coaching or, or what, but he ain't panning out to be what the uh, Jaguars hoped to, he would be. Yeah, they're going to end up in another Blake Border situ situation to where they're going to have to sign him to a contract where yeah. they can get out of it super early. I mean, that's how bad it is with the Jaguars and Trevor Lawrence. And I actually saw this a uh, couple years back, man. I mean, when I look at Tre Trevor Lawrence, I mean, I, I look at a guy who's good when he's good and he's really bad when yeah. he's really bad. That I'm playoff dub, that playoff dub, that was the worst performance I've ever seen in a half of football. And I watched Brian Hoyer against the Chiefs uh get his I mean he, he had a concussion and he played and he was and Trevor Lawrence went through four interceptions and then they had the comeback with Staley and then he yeah. had like, <laughs> yeah. against anybody else they wouldn't even pull that off but we already know how the Chargers roll. I mean they the biggest choke artists in history. They're gonna be nice though. I think they're a big threat. I I, I think they're a threat. Ooh, I like too. them hardball. I, do. I don't yeah, have they they with hardball. I mean, they do need to put the ball on the ground some more, man, because the Chargers and we don't watch the Chargers for so many years try to air the ball out and then in the process the defense go get the points right back up and before you know it they in a shootout and they've been and choked the game away. So yeah, maybe they do need to run the football a whole lot more. I don't know. They got such a cap issue over there in Chargers. I don't know. They 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 got to yeah. figure things out too. So they let all the wide receivers go. Austin Eckler's gone. They got to really re rebuild over there and figure out some money. Well, they got Bosa and Mac to redo the deals, and then they got got the top five pick. I never don't really mean heard. Not, don't mean they're not going to trade Bosa or Mac later, or you know, right before the draft or draft night, try to get some draft capital and let Jim get some of his guys in there. Yeah, he's uh. He wins though, man. Three NFC championship appearances in the Super Bowl in four years. Pretty wild. All right. So we saved the uh the most polarizing hot button thing for last. <laughs> Some of these Oilers uniforms, man. Y'all don't give a rat's ass about Oilers uniforms. What what are we doing with these Oilers uniforms? That 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 does not mean a damn thing to any of y'all. What what is it? Is it just as simple as you just like to make people in Houston mad with the Oilers uniforms? No, did did everybody forget we was the Tennessee Oilers for two years when we first moved? Like everybody's like, oh, when was they ever? We was Tennessee Oilers the first two years, nine ninety seven, ninety eight, and then or ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight. That ninety eight year is when we went to the Tennessee Titans in, in the ninety nine uh, two thousand season when we went to the Super Bowl. That was our first year as Tennessee Titans, but we was Tennessee Oilers before that. So it's it's in, in our DNA of who we are. It's about the story that tells of where we came from, how oh, we moved God. to Tennessee, and everything, especially oh, fans like me that came with Oilers that ain't just starting as a new franchise. This is just a franchise that moved in many franchises. What's that got to do with Love You Blue? Love You Blue was 70s, 80s. Okay, that, she did. Y'all gave all that away, though. Y'all gave all of that away. And then have you Billy White and Johnson out there dancing, doing doing a little something when, when they're playing the Texans and stuff like that. Come it's on. Because it's not the city that you're from. It's the organization and the ownership. And that's where it's come from with See, Tennessee. And, and that's where the problem here. is. Yeah, for so many years, those Houston Oilers greats didn't have a home, didn't have a place to call because Houston kept trying to say, well, we're Houston. We should have – no. That's like saying Baltimore should have everything for Indianapolis Colts because they started out there in Baltimore. No, that's not the same case. They moved, and all their heritage moves with them, and that's what it has with Oilers. We needed to recognize these Oiler greats instead of having a city just being, hey, we need to hold on to the – y'all didn't want them. Y'all didn't want to give us a stadium. We moved on. This is what it is. Stop trying to be the ex that's holding on to the boyfriend. Let us go. Let us move on and let us live our life and bring up some past memories from time to time and celebrate some of these greats. See, the, and that's the problem right there, man. Y'all wheeled out Earl, dude. That was, that was messed up. Y'all took it too far there. Y'all <laughs> chose out the Earl, city. Man. That was too much. Y'all chose the city over the franchise, bro. That's the problem that, 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 that's happening right now. 
Y'all chose the city of the franchise. Them, half them older Texan fans y'all got, they were all fans of our franchise. They 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 were mad because they left their city and they became Texan fans. And they're mad at us because we're we're the same franchise and we're just wearing the same uniforms that they used to wear. And I just I don't get it. You know what I'm saying? I I, I wasn't I, I didn't even know anything about the Oilers, but I love the uniform, the nice uniform. And they they like you said, it don't it don't mean I don't I don't know what it means, you know what I'm saying, what it meant to y'all, but you know. Of people in Houston, man, but at the same time, my franchise, they, this is part of their history, man. There are no lakes in Los Angeles. How many lakes are there in Los Angeles? But for them to be called the Lakers, <laughs> they came from Minneapolis, you know what I'm saying? Where they, where they have plenty of lakes over there, you know, the Great Lakes. How many do, do they play jazz in, in, um, in Utah? No, they don't play jazz in Utah, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They, they came from New Orleans, you know, like you, why come none of them get mad? You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't never see nobody in St. Louis complaining about the Rams going to L.A. With it's the same thing. This has happened before. It's just I guess the Oilers just meant a lot more to y'all. Y'all took it as a culture. We took your culture away, and it's in Nashville now. You know, I, I just wish the Texans would just embrace what Houston is now rather than what the Houston was with the Oilers days. Like that candy paint red uniforms y'all had. Actually, embrace that. Like move on. Like I don't know why that the Houston Texans feel like they got to try to take and replace Houston Oilers. Like it's a completely different franchise. Y'all started from the ground up fresh. Y'all y'all could have marketed this the exact way, however y'all wanted to. So I did, I never understood why when they came out, it was such an issue. Like oh now we want Oilers now. It's like y'all let that shit go now. Just rebrand and build off of what h town is with the candy paint and all that stuff it would be beautiful and then i look like this, you know what i'm saying um we we got all the players that come to our games like i went to the the oilers game that we had against the falcons i seen billy white shoes there warren moon was there uh earl campbell was there you know, you know what i'm saying all the all the oil agrees come to our game so like you know what i'm saying they they even support the they even support miss amy man miss amy took a you know bud adams was a real was he he didn't really he didn't really go out after after the uh the former grace with miss amy had, she's made it uh, uh like a, a president for you know what i'm saying to go to the president to go uh out and, and, and go out the oil of grace man like you know she wants it she she wants the history to stay you know yeah, I'm and saying. I'm I'm kind of with y'all. I, I don't. My co-host is an OG, uh, OG John Lopez, and I I don't really, you know, the Oiler uniforms. I've kind of moved past that the whole thing too. I think it's kind of it was it was funny, but it does it does generate a lot of emotion. I I just think it's weird that you know we're taking pictures of Eddie George and Earl Campbell and stuff, and it's like oh the, the Derrick Henry all, all time greats. Earl ain't got nothing to do with that. Come on, man. I ain't got to wheel out Earl. That that was when you took it too far, wheeling out Earl. But hey. they deserved that though. They they What's those this Miss Amy thing too. Why do y'all call her Miss Amy? I saw Carthon doing that. Is that what we're doing, Miss Amy? Yeah, the right mama, man. Hey, bro, bro, you, lady. you gotta you gotta respect the Miss mama. Amy. Oh my God. Yeah, Miss Amy, man. That's a that's a sign of respect. Can y'all do? Can y'all call uh, uh McNair, Mister McNair, with a straight face? No, you can't because you already know. That he's a, a, a elf the best owner. owner in the division. I would, right I would now, try man. not he to say he, he hired Miko. He's, he's built yeah. a culture. He's got guys coming here for less oh, money. Man. He doesn't have to overpay Calvin Ridley right now because of what he's done. He just took over. His dad died. He had to write the shit. Best owner in the division right now. You yeah. got Amy Adams Stank. She's just she's she's a little too obsessed with the Houston thing. I'll be honest with that. You got she's Jim Murphy. You but got yeah, Jim Murphy, and then you got Omar Khan. What's he doing? Having a son run a damn wrestling company. It see, sucks. but that's the thing too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, so what did you rank, Miss Amy? Last, dead last in the league. Worst oh. owner in the league. Oh, over. Oh, Worst over. owner in the league. Oh, yeah. 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 Ursa? Yeah. Ursa? He, he hating. Ursay's oh. better. Ursay has y'all talk about track records. Jim Ursay has a Super Bowl. Y'all y'all put Doug Peterson up there. Jim Ursay's better than Miss Amy. What's Miss Amy? Like, uh, 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 NFL owner. We gonna we gonna act like the guy in Carolina don't exist. Oh, they're in the same. They're probably in about the same class. Her, uh, what about Miss the, what Amy about and uh, De Tapper? It's like it's like a, like a puncher shot right there. Nah, That's the like owner of the Browns, Brown. the owner of the Washington. Like, there's way worse. There's a new one. They got a new one. They got a new owner. It's uh, the committee it's not is not an owner, bro. They have a committee in Washington as ownership. That's not, bro. You you know that's not going to work. They got Magic have... Johnson, man. <laughs> Oh man, you can say that tweet in Washington, man. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh man, no, bro. Man, so how how was Miss Amy? How was she a terrible owner? He explains to me. 
Well, I mean, she she fired Vrabel early. She she they, they, there's no direction right now. Um, she's obsessing over the Houston thing. What what is she? What, what makes her a good owner? What has she done? So what you say done? there's there's no direction. How do you say there's no? Because I thought y'all were gonna rebuild after y'all got rid of Vrabel, and now y- y'all are actually running like the Washington, uh, the like the Dan Snyder. Like I I almost feel like Dan Snyder sold the team, and then he he's kind of like calling the shots there like you're spending a lot of money in free agency on expensive free agents you thought you were gonna i, I was like man they're gonna rebuild this might be something and then it's like they're going all in with will levis it, it does it feels kind of washington-y no, yeah. i mean rebuilds rebuilds are different i mean there there doesn't have to be you know the type of rebuild where a team just sit back does nothing and just sucks all the way up until the point they acquire a bunch of first round draft picks that eventually it. I mean, teams nowadays, I mean, they trying to compete. I mean, there is a thing called a competitive rebuild. So that's what's going that's on. That's what you in are Tennessee. in, a competitive rebuild? That's what oh, they're attempting man. to do. They're attempting to go through a competitive rebuild. They okay. got a quarterback that – Yeah, I like that, feel, though. That's the right attitude, competitive rebuild. Yeah, so, they, so. they got a quarterback they feel like, you know – can be something. So they give them some legitimate weapons to work with, and they're going to, you know, give them a defense that can keep games close. And, you know, we, we're going to see how it all works out, man. Yeah, and I'm going to say this. Uh, this is all under Andy. Andy. Yeah, go ahead. Just had our first two losing seasons the past two years. You know that, right? Like, we've had seven straight winning seasons under Amy Adams. Trump and y'all got rid of the coach. Season. Y'all got rid of the coach that constantly well, we had, had y'all fighting, constantly overachieving. Like, I like Mike Vrabel. But if y'all were going to be this aggressive in free agency, why not keep him? I bet we, you did we, like Mike Vrabel because, running yeah. here, here up into a brick wall. <laughs> hey. Not, hey. not, not hey. attacking that, not hey. attacking that weak ass. Texts and secondary. I bet y'all did love Mike Bright. No, I thought he was a good coach. You didn't think he was a good coach? Like y'all, now, y'all could have easily won the division two years ago, but the quarterback got hurt. I, I thought Vrabel, I thought Vrabel did a really good job. I thought he was it was a good coach. He's a good coach, but he's not a good coach to when it comes to building up a younger team. Okay. Yeah, I can agree with that. They they wasn't so much Vrabel fans. Y'all turned on him like crazy, man. Y'all turned on Vrabel like crazy. Yeah, Yeah. Fausto defended him to the cows came on. Yeah, I was the Vrabel fan, and I'm with it. But and and I wasn't with the firing. But knowing that what Amy fired him, and then seeing the vision we're going with now, okay, I get it. It, it, Vrabel was just not what she was wanting the team to be. It wasn't necessarily that Vrabel was bad. It just wasn't the team she wanted to be, and he didn't conduct things the way she wanted to conduct things. He was a little bit more sterner with things than she wanted to be. She wanted to kind of be more friendly, family friendly with things. So it's just more like the visions didn't align. I mean, Adams wanted Vrabel to be more friendly. Well, she's wanting no, the organization no, to be family friendly. More friendly. So she, 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 there's a stigma they're trying to get away from. You saw the report cards come out where, you know, they said the Titans facility don't really treat families and the players families that well. They're trying to fix all that. It was, we're still trying to pick and fix things from J Rob, John Robertson's bullshit that he did in his trade of AJ Brown. And I think that Vrabel being around was that where it went down, the, the AJ think, Brown trade was at the end. I think so because I think yeah. Vrabel couldn't let it go and couldn't trust the people around him because they let go of AJ when he knows that's what should have never happened. And that's when I think doubt got with Vrabel, and then that's when the disconnect between him and Amy got together. And that's when ultimately you got to kind of move on from Vrabel. So looking back on it, she's probably a year too late letting go of Vrabel, but he's a, he's a damn good coach in my opinion. So if Landry, if he, if he was this great, amazing head coach, bro, that that, that just overachieved with the Tennessee title, why come nobody hired him after the, after he was fired? I mean, that was what five. Hey, look, give me fouled up again. I want to hear Landry's answer on this. One. Didn't Diana Rossini say because he was too fat and big or something like that? Wasn't that like that? He wasn't was that a large he human. He was intimidating <laughs> people, and bro. Like, like I said so many times, if you're right, Vrabel in that situation, Tennessee still has to t- pay you for head coaching. If the if the head coaching but, job ain't right, fuck it, I'm not gonna take the job. I'm but just. I think going- he, I think he probably just taking some time off because I, I think some there might be some better jobs that come come through. Yes. Uh, in all honesty, I think it's kind of the same with Belichick. What do y'all? Um, I was gonna ask y'all about. Uh, something else out there. Oh yes, God, I this is what because y'all 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 are like addicted to consuming titans content i'm assuming right like so y'all are okay 
What what what's what do y'all say about Kaharski up there? Because he's he's kind of he kind of rubs me the wrong way. He kind of seems like like I know one of his buddies, John McClain. Kaharski just kind of strikes me as a grumpy ass curmudgeon. Like what what is going what what is the verdict on Kaharski up there? I respectfully yeah. say that PK is toxic. Okay. And like I said, I say that in a respectful way because Here's he the thing about PK. Respect, but a lot of times guys that get that good, they become turdish when they've been doing it for 40 years. Like he's been he's been that. But the yeah. thing about PK is okay, there has been times that he has been the voice of reason. And you know, when Titans fans, we get on one sometimes, we get to freaking about freaking out about the craziest things. And there has been times where PK then tried to talk some people off the ledge. But there's a lot of times where there's absolutely nothing going on, and here come PK with something out of nowhere nobody gives a damn about. He's raising hell about it and going to these press conferences. He's asking questions about it. Clearly, the guys at the press conference, they're not trying to hear that, and he goes right back to his hole and complains about it. Yeah. yeah, PK loves the ruffle feathers. That's that's his thing. He just loves it. You ever been in the crowd and seen those things where like somebody just throws a chair and everybody's trying to figure out who threw the chair? PK is the guy. Morgan Wallen, man. Morgan Wallen, right? Three <laughs> felonies, I think. Oh, threw yeah. it off a twenty pound chair, three feet yeah. from the cops. So it's yeah. Morgan Wallen and PK. They're the ones throwing those chairs. It's just like it's too quiet. Let's just ruffle up some shit real quick, and they just toss a chair every once in a while. Just to that, that's kind of like comparing CJ to Dak. I compare it to like say comparing CJ to Dak. <laughs> We can talk hey, about that if you want to, man. Hey, that's, I mean, hey, you know. <laughs> yeah, let, let's talk about uh CJ Golf or CJ Press. Uh, oh, CJ Golf now. Which that I was you actually prefer. one of the comparisons coming out though. Like in all in all in all seriousness, that was kind of uh one of the names that did come up uh, with CJ. I'll be honest with y'all about CJ and and I'm I'm just I I was Bryce or Bus. Like I was I was ticked off they lost that um game. Uh, and, and the craziest thing about it is, in hindsight, you, you, you hear some people say, well, that was the luckiest thing that ever happened. Is it lucky? Or if C they knew CJ was this good, then that should then they should have definitely thrown the game. Like, if you knew CJ was this good, then you definitely should have thrown the game uh, and taken him. But, I mean, so, sometimes it just happens like that. Sometimes you get uh, – you, you luck into something. Now, now how good is it going to be? Who knows? But – yeah, so but but you you don't you don't believe this CJ Goff thing. You you can't you can't really think that. No, anymore. I mean, shoot, you know? I I think CJ does well within the system. I mean, man, we can go around the table on CJ, man. Yeah. What, what, yeah. This is the new this is a completely new system now. No, it's not a it's from it's what it was at Ohio. It's, 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 it's a new bro. system for this Texas team right here. I mean, the Texans have been in that uh, Shanahan system before, and we've that seen was a long time ago. We were in y'all. It system. don't matter. We were, it, we were it don't matter. The Texans the have been year. in it before, so y'all recognize the system. Y'all see what the system is. Shoot, Matt Shaw went out there and threw for what forty five hundred yards in this system before or whatever. I mean, Jared Goff threw for. 4,000 yards or so. More Look at what Leonard is bringing team. here. Like, what, is, what, what is this? Man. Look at this. This man, this man a brought a graph. Yeah. Oh, they, what they, are, they, what they, are, they, are we they, doing they, here, I mean, man? You can, you can look at the numbers. The numbers are right there for you. Now, I will say that completion of uh, percentage or whatnot, CJ threw the ball more. So, mm -hmm. yeah, the percentage is going to be on the lower side. But, I mean... I'm just you saying. You got to look at their impact in the on, game. Man. You got to look at their impact in the game in their rookie seasons. I mean, are, I, feel are, like, I feel like <laughs> CJ Stroud was impacting the game the same way Dak Prescott was impacting the look, game. Man, he didn't have hey, Zeke hey, Elliott. He didn't have, no, he didn't have a run game like, like Zeke Elliott. It they didn't have an offensive though. line that they did. He had legitimate no weapons. They missed two games, but they don't want to talk about how uh, he – play an extra game more than Dak, though. <laughs> they don't want to talk about and, that. Yeah, it's an extra week, and Dak didn't play that last year. So, actually, they played the they same played 16 game. games. Yep, they both played 16 games, and oh this, this is the, the ratio both, for you. They so both are just, just going to roll with this till, till, till the yeah. games happen. Y'all got, got probably five more months. 
When you do see, y'all I they, and I will say things. this, and I will say this as well. If the Texans had a legitimate run game, those numbers would not look like that for CJ Stroud because they would have been running the ball more. And it does, it won't, it wouldn't take away from you know what he accomplished. I'm just saying, you looking at this 4108, it wouldn't have been that 4108 had the Texans had this a legitimate is, is run sad. game. This is sad by y'all. This is sad. I, I yeah, didn't, I didn't, it's not that's, that's the numbers. <laughs> numbers go wild. Numbers go wild. Come on. They, they both Jamal, play 15 games. They, hey, they're be both honest. Now- when when Josh Allen su- uh, or when uh when Will Levis sucks, y'all are gonna call him Josh Allen. Like that's that's coming. Y'all don't even have to credit me. Y'all can take it. Y'all no, can ha- no, y'all have my permission. No, as soon as he goes out, like, hey Josh Allen, calling you're calling you. fine. You can go with it. <laughs> I'm just, it's okay. When when CJ starts man, messing with you, call him CJ Prescott. Man, you can't deny the numbers, man. Even coming out of college, man, they yeah. was they was they said his pro comparison is Dak Prescott. Like they even we even got we we got a video. <laughs> Somebody yeah. say this ain't yeah, even, this ain't you you though. Yeah, y'all are crazy with that. I man, I appreciate y'all for rolling through. I'm sure we can we'll talk throughout the season. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. Come on, good to have a little sale, division man. rivalry. We play twice a week, but we got to be back on each other's podcast at some yeah, point. Yeah, you come yeah, on talk sure, man. Like yeah. back and forth, all that. I, I like getting I like getting the pulse of other uh squads and stuff like that. And um, I think the rivalry is healthy, it has a lot of history. Um and uh, I enjoy following y'all. I enjoy all the smoke, the back and forth with y'all. So uh, I greatly appreciate y'all for uh, for rolling through and giving me uh, so much of y'all's time. And uh, look forward to seeing what y'all do in the draft. Um, could get really interesting that seven spot. Whether y'all just go with the tackle or the the wide receiver, and then on day two, y'all could uh, kill some of the hopes here. So it'll be really fun, man. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah, for sure, man. And we appreciate you having us on, man. And like I said, you got to come by the Coliseum and chop I it will. up with us, man. I mean, it's a way more laid back atmosphere. You got a good laid back atmosphere too, man. Yeah. But, you know, once you get yeah, in the Coliseum, man, I mean, it, it's straight <laughs> up bar vibes. No, I like that. No, the radio show, it, and people talk about it, it's a lot different because on, on the radio show, I'm, I'm a little more, I'm, I'm in my element. So it's a little bit more. You know, here, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm coming home from talking, you know, four hours and and blabbing and stuff, and then it's kind of like, okay, let's let's chill out. You know, I got the baby oh, yeah, and the wife. Man, that's there, what it's so. all about, man. I mean, we we want we want all the you know information or whatnot, but sometimes, man, you just got to kick back and just you know shoot the shit. Talk ball, man. Don't try yeah, to be. Bro. Don't try to make yourself the smartest guy in the room. Don't try to. I mean, just just try to balance it out and stuff. You know, like it's not. I don't know when this happened where everybody started trying to like talk about like just try to talk about like you know DVOA and all that. Like, okay, like, yeah, bro, better. stay in your I, lane, I, I man. That. That's why I tell people, man, stay in your lane. I mean, it ain't that freaking serious i mean honestly landry i mean you getting paid to talk ball or whatever but i mean even with even with this space right here i mean shoot a part of you 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 don't want to you know be in a professional mode all no. day every day man no. you you want to you know come home sit back you know what i'm saying kick your feet up and just talk your talk Light something up, just just kind of chill a little bit. So yeah, yeah I, I feel y'all, man, and I appreciate y'all. When do y- when are y'all on? Let the let the people know if they want to get the uh, the pulse of what's going on with the Titans. Oh yeah, we're on uh, Monday and Fridays at seven p.m. Central Time. We're on all social media platforms: YouTube, Facebook, X, TikTok, Rumble. Um, you can catch us all, also on all streaming uh, streaming platforms for audio. If you just want to catch it audio as well, we're on all streaming platforms for that. Uh, you can check out our all, all our articles, grab merch and all that from the TitansColiseum.com. Um, we drop articles there with Char- uh, Charm Sports all the time and, and keep you updated on news and what's going on with the Tennessee Titans. Appreciate it, guys, uh, very much, man. I'll, I'll holler at y'all on Twitter, and uh, uh, thanks for giving me some time. And uh, happy draft. We're two weeks away now, officially. It's going to be fun. Yes. Yes, sir. Man, they got a great show, man. Keep, keep this up, man. This is a great appreciate show. Appreciate it. Man. All right. I appreciate yeah, y'all, man. Y'all's college, y'all Tennessee college fans, too. I know, RJ, you you, you're, you seem to be a Tennessee guy, right? Yeah, big volunteers okay. fan. You know, I'm a whole new guy. <laughs> hey, oh, I'm a Texas guy, man. I'm a Texas guy. So hey, man. Welcome yeah, to the really SEC, really both of y'all. <laughs> Well, you could have played some real football. Who you got, Titan? No, uh, I ain't no, I ain't no college fan, man. Okay. I, 
I support, you know what I'm saying, my Mississippi teams. I support the Vols somewhat whenever they ain't on no kind of foolishness. Well, let me shut up because Vols fans, they, <laughs> they going to get you out my best friends right now. So yeah, I'm going to get up crazy. Yeah, so I actually went to Texas OU. I've been 20 times. My dad would never let me leave early. So the oh. Bob Stoops ass whoopings, I had to. Uh, yeah. I had to sit there and kind of take it on the take it on the chin and that. So yeah, and then yeah. this year too, did you? Did but now y'all got a terrible coach though. Let's be honest. That's the biggest dope in sports. Well, what <laughs> happened this year then? If it was so terrible, what happened? What, ha what, what happened? What happened is Sark, Sark's overrated. He wet the bed. But let's be serious. <laughs> let's be serious. Venables, come on, man. You 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 can't really you can't support the Venables. Hey, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is <laughs> Venables, yeah. come on, bro. He's talking about blowing fire hose and stuff. Bro, we had a situation where Lincoln Riley left us in some bullshit. Forget Lincoln Riley. And Bro, now your quarterback that's a Heisman candidate left your ass. We're doing good for, for Oregon. what the circumstances is that we was put in. We're doing damn good for what we was left in. Now, what were y'all put in? Football, that, well, he left and took everybody, coaching and players. So, like, in college, and we didn't have a coach. You left with a game still left in the season. Like, that shit, it was just crazy. So, for the six, now, that's not excuses, but for the situation we uh, was in, I, I expected us to win, like, one or two games. I didn't expect us to be good at all. And then we come out here, play like we did. It was like, all right, this is better than I was expecting from him, but he's definitely not the coach future. He's a, he's like a stepping stone guy. We gotta we gotta find somebody better. All right, we'll see we'll see how that goes, man. It's a, a whole new element here. Appreciate you guys for real uh, for coming through. Thanks very much, guys. Well, so take care. All right, there you go. It's a little uh, Titan POV from the uh, from the Titan Coliseum, guys. Uh, you can follow them on uh, all social media platforms. Uh, I, I just think it's it's good to have rivalries, man, uh, especially with the Texans. Uh, not as much history. You heard them mention the the no conference championship type of stuff. So I just think it's good to uh, embrace. Uh, be sure to subscribe, like, right along. We'll be on at 10 a.m. Uh, tomorrow, man. We got a lot of stuff to say about these Astros, man. I'm, I'm almost I'm almost already out on the manager. I know it's early. I'm 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 almost already out on the manager. Uh, maybe I'll sleep on it and change my mind. But uh, appreciate everyone for rolling through. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to get into this Stefan Diggs drama. We'll get into the draft as well. Draft mania a week from today. John Harris uh, going to come through and break it all down. Uh, and I appreciate you for rolling through. Always remember, when it comes to this text and stuff, we're all in it together. Thanks for coming through in the locker room. Special edition, uh, Tennessee, Houston, embracing the hate. Texas talk, yeah, you know what we about to do. Localize everything is what we really do. We we the post of the city too. Landlock, got the game in the headlock. Local